has come. Today is solar panel day. I think I got everything and I think I got my mind wrapped around it, but I want to kind of bring you guys through this with me so you can learn too. By my mistakes. <laughs> Alright, so when you buy when you buy solar panels, this is what you get. Big panel. Uh, this one's flexible. They don't have to be flexible. A lot of them aren't. Uh, the only reason I got flexible was because they're significantly lighter and weight is a big issue on catamarans. So what you get with this is you get a positive cable and a negative cable. All right. So this is all off the same one. Now there's two options. Either I can take all the positives this one's the positive on this side, this one's the positive on this side, I put them together. That's called running it in parallel. Uh, you can wire it however you want that way, but that's basically what it is. Also, there's an option where I can take the negative of one side and hook it up to the positive of the other side. Just like this. And it makes it pretty. And then you can just string them all along. Uh, so what that does is it increases the voltage and keeps the current the same. The other way around would increase the current and keep the voltage the same. If you don't believe me, look it up. So I actually haven't decided what to do yet. Um, well, either series or parallel, but I'm thinking I'm going to go to parallel just because um, the voltages are a little, a little lower. I don't want it to burn out the, the solar panels. So, yeah, let's talk about the other stuff here. All right. I know this is a weird angle, but I'm going to see if it works. Okay, so this is my solar controller. It's called the Midnight Kid. It's a MPPT controller, like it says. Uh, MPPT stands for Multi Point Power Tracking. Um, there's a couple different kinds of charger controllers you can get. These are a little more expensive, but they are more efficient. Batteries will last longer, solar panels will last longer, it's got built-in monitoring capability and a few different safeguards that a PWM controller doesn't have. So it's worth the extra couple hundred bucks to get a good controller, especially on a boat. This is called a shunt. This goes in uh, the negative side. This is for measuring the current that you're using. So we put all the, all the batteries negatives on one side and then put another negative wire out to the negative panel. And you can measure across this to see what uh, the, the current usage is. Right now and all day, um, the Midnight Kid has a program in it where it will tell you how much power you used every day, which is, which is really cool on a sailboat because if you have something that's using too much power, or obviously, obvious reasons really. So this is called the Whizbang Junior. This, that's kind of a cool name. But this hooks onto the shunt here and uh, goes back up to the Midnight Kid here. And uh, that's for the monitoring. So that's a really good addition. This is a battery temperature sensor. Uh, this, this will also hook up to the Midnight Kid and make sure that my batteries aren't going over temp when it's charging. I talked to a battery manufacturer and he told me that the life of the battery is dependent upon how clean you keep it, how much water you keep in it, uh, the, the life cycles of it, and the temperature that it gets to. And that's pretty much it. They're just big lead, you know, weights. So this is important. All right, I got 10 gauge wire, positive and negative for the battery. This will be to hook up to the battery from here to the battery. This is 10 gauge. And then this, to the solar panels is 12 gauge. This is two conductor 12 gauge. This is what the connectors look like once they're done. These are soldered in. And then we would just hook these up to the solar, the, the solar panels. Boom and boom. If you were using one panel, it'd be super easy. Bam, done. But since we're using more than one, we need to either wire them in parallel or in series. And I, I, I haven't decided what to do yet, but I will. All right, the only other couple of things I need are a couple circuit breakers, uh, 30 amp circuit breakers, because the, the Midnight Kid is a 30 amp charger. So I wanna make sure that it doesn't 
you know, explode. <laughs> or, you know, it, it doesn't break. So I'm gonna put a 30 amp uh, breaker on the positive of the, of the solar panels, of all the solar panels coming in, and another one on the positive of the battery, just in case. So if anything goes above 30 amps, it pops and it stops. Let's talk about cost. I think the solar panels were 175 each, and there's three of them. The Midnight Kid was just over $300, plus another $30 with the uh, uh, mounting bracket. Um, the connectors, I, they came with the boat, but I, I don't think they're very expensive. I looked them, I looked them up, and they're only like 20 25 bucks for a pack. Uh, the Whizbang Junior, that's this power um, monitoring device was I think like 50 bucks or 75 bucks and this shunt was also about 50 bucks 40 or 40 bucks so all in all I've got let's see 300 plus I, I mean like a thousand bucks probably a little little less than a thousand bucks but it'll it'll provide me with plenty of power and I'll be completely off-grid and autonomous all right here's the back of the charge controller and uh, you just take this screw out and you can access the inside. So here's where our PV wind input, that would be for the solar panels, po positive and negative, don't screw those up. And then that's for the load, if we want to add a load to our uh, DC panel, which I'm not going to do, I'm just going to use the batteries. And then battery out right here. So this wire will go into here and connect into there. But I want to use, these, this thing came with a bunch of connectors and I really like these. But there's two of them. I think this is for like, you know, an RV or something. But um, they don't, they're not really made to both fit in there. You see how they're hitting? So I'm going to um, shave down the, the sides of them right here so they'll both fit because they look cool and, and it'll look cool mounted up here. I'm going to mount it up by the radio. Okay, so I mounted the Midnight Kid right here. I'm going to take it off to show you guys. So here's the back of it. So I've got my, this is going to my battery. These will go in here. And then I've got my Whizbang Junior. It'll go right there. And then I've got these going to my solar panels, the actual panels. That'll go up on top of the hard top up there. All right, so right now I'm uh, focusing on this portion of it. So let me show you guys a little trick. That's 10 gauge wire. It comes down right here, all the way down through that wall connection right there. And then behind the fuel tank, which I don't know if you can see, it's back there. Yep. And then I routed it around right here, all the way down this line and down 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 boom and that's where it'll attach this is, this is my negative and here's my positive right here right there okay and that's the same place that the um, 80 amp charger for the boat attaches so I've already cut it to length now I'm just gonna peel back that layer add some connectors and connect it up uh, the trick I wanted to show you the guys though is right here. This is your normal tool that everybody has for doing this, but this isn't the best tool for the job. This is the best tool for the job. They're about 50 bucks. They are crimping tool. It's a crimping tool and a wire cutter tool. And it, it this thing is awesome. So I definitely recommend if you're going to do something like this, invest in a good set of tools. And then I buy these in like the 200 packs. They're good for everything. I have them, I usually mount them uh, like inside a door 
like open the door up and there's a, a whole pack of them you just slide them out one at a time invaluable this is what I'll use to cut the sheathing and then I'll use this and these connectors to uh, connect it all up so also if you're gonna do anything like this this is double wall uh, heat shrink it's got uh, a little bit of um, adhesive inside it and as soon as it shrinks down the adhesive warms up and kind of spurts out and it makes it wa watertight and more airtight for saltwater air getting in there and corroding everything so these are also um, the shrinkable kind so put your wire in there you crimp it and then you can shrink this down onto it and then you just, you'll shrink this over top of the whole thing so it's just a double protection kind of thing That's one, there's only three more to go. <laughs> okay, so this is the shunt. And I'm gonna install the Whizbang Junior on top of it. So here's the Whizbang. I've got instructions here. And basically it just says they, they give me a bunch of standoffs, so you know put it on there first of all we want to shut off our batteries killed everything with my battery system I've got two separate ground loops one ground that goes to the engine from both batteries they go to both engines that's like a big loop and then another ground loop that goes to this panel one lead for each uh, battery. All right, so here's the DC panel in the back. This is the ground bus. So this wire right here comes from the, the starboard battery bank, and this one comes from the port battery bank. What we want to do is get both of these onto this side of the shunt and then have a little pigtail go from here to here. That way, all the power will run through this shunt, the, everything that's being used for the house. Um, so in order to do that, this one's long enough, I can just take this one off and it'll reach. But this one is going to have to be lengthened. So I'm going to use this butt connector on this wire. This is extra wire, I just got it like a six foot piece of it. And I'm going to take this one off and cut that terminal off and then butt connect it to this put some heat shrink over it and then run this one all the way up over here all the way up to here so here's the butt connected end this is on there man it ain't coming off and then I'm gonna slide some marine grade shrink tubing over the top and then shrink it down so it'll look all nice to do this you need this tool you need a big crimping tool this thing is big so not for everybody but you can go to an electronics shop uh, or electric store and they'll have this tool so maybe they'll let you borrow it all right i finished the shunt so took that off it's down here that's my couple with some heat shrink ran it up over and up to here okay and then it's got a little pigtail that goes back down to the bus cool and then this uh, control wire here is butt connected in with this gray wire and the gray wire runs the same length all the way down up and back and out there right there all right, so solar panels. 
Here they are on the floor. They're spaced out just about where they would be on the hardtop. Pretty close, don't have to be exact. So I'm taking the positive wire. I, de I decided to do it in, in parallel instead of series. Um, I just think that'd be better. So in parallel, all we have to do is hook all the positives together and hook all the negatives together. And then those two lines coming down, we, we hook that to the charge controller. So what we're gonna do is take this positive, hook it to this guy right here. And then we're gonna take this line and have two going in to this guy's, to this panel's positive. And then we'll also have two going into this panel's positive, and then that one will go down to the charge controller, which that wire is already run and going through the tubing. I wanted to show you guys doing one of these connections for the solar panels. Here it is. So it's important when you do this that you don't connect this up. It's just kind of sitting here. These panels are not connected right now. If they are connected and you want to connect them all up, put a blanket over them because you're dealing with a lot of current or a lot of voltage depending on how you're wiring them up. So they don't quite fit in here. I got to fan them out and kind of thin them out a little bit. So we're going to just take off a few of these little strands. Both sides here. Now we can put them together and twist them up, make sure they're relatively the same. And once we solder it together, it won't lose much of its conductability there for being thinner but now it'll fit inside here what we need to do is open this a little bit you see that now it'll fit in here boom Now we can solder it. So when it's done, it should look something like that. Okay. So when these connectors come, they come like this. All right, you unscrew them. And they've got a little, a couple little parts in there. So, put the back on first. So it says don't disconnect the solar panels under load, but just to be safe, I'm gonna connect them under load because the sun's out. So I'm gonna put a blanket over them to make sure that they're not, they're not gonna shock me or destroy the other panels. Cool, so I need to you know, clean up the wires and tie wrap them and tie them down to this, but it looks awesome. It's all done. It's a little 5200 in there. So there's no water getting in inside there. Coming out. To negative, negative goes to negative, and negative goes to negative, and then positive, 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 right here. So it's all strung together. Positives are strung together, and negatives are strung together. So they're in, they're in parallel. If they were in series, I would have just hooked them up. It'd have been easier. But this is supposedly better. So uh, all right, wish me luck.